Hey guys, Grover here with another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and today what we'll be covering is we're going to co cover how to add a actor into the game that allows us to use our mouse to look around the scene, alright? So obviously when we hit play at the moment, we can move around the scene, but it's a sort of like out of body type view, like sort of spectator mode. But what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and add our own uh, sort of camera into the scene. The way we do that is we're going to have to create a new C++ class. And it's going to extend something called pawn, and the pawn is something that can basically receive input from the controller. I don't really like the word possessed they've used, it's basically just something that we can use our input devices to control. But anyway, so without further ado, let's get started. So obviously you've got to create a C++ class called, and it's going to extend pawn. All we're going to do is hit next, and we're going to call that top pawn, because that's the convention I'm trying to go for here. Alright, we're going to hit create class. Right, it's going to add the code to the project and it's going to generate the project files and all that sort of good stuff for us. And once it's done that, it's going to open up Visual Studio once it's compiled the code, like so. All right, Visual Studio is now loading. And basically, we're going to do exactly what we did last episode with adding a static mesh stuff, but we're going to add a few more things. So, I'm going to open it up. You can see we've got our actor from last episode with our static mesh, all right, but we don't want that. All we want is our top pawn header file and our top pawn source file. So we're going to start off inside of our header file and we're going to create a few functions and variables. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to create is I'm going to make a U property, like we did last time, edit anywhere, so we can edit inside of our um, details panel on the right here. And what it's going to be is it's going to be a U spring arm component. And the reason we're going for a spring arm component is because um, it's going to be a sort of third person type view so we can see the model we'd have in with our static mesh. So obviously this is a pointer, it's a U spring arm component and that's it. We're also going to add in a U camera component. Component. So we point it and I'm just going to call it camera. And also what we're going to add in is a U property. Just edit anywhere again. And it's going to be a U static mesh component. We don't actually need to add this in, but it's very useful because it's going to allow us to see the, the pivot point that we're going to rotate around and all sorts of stuff. Okay, now what we need to do is I'm going to add two functions and a variable. All right, our first two functions we're going to create is going to be void. It's not going to return anything. Uh, mouse your, which is going to take a float of axis and we're going to have another void called mouse pitch you can call it mouse x and y if you want to, I just like to stick with pitch and your because we're working for rotations and it's going to take a variable axis alright, we're also all right, going to have to be able to put these variables equal to something alright, or set, set these as a identifier for another variable and the way we're going to do that is we're going to take create a variable that's going to take camera input for us called f vector 2d because we need up and down don't we? we need mouse x and the mouse y so mouse f vector of 2d and what we're going to call it is we're going to call it um now we'll call it mouse input i don't know why visual studio is having a bit of a hissy fit down here but just was done and that's what we're going to do in this class we are done in here i think for now and uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our source file and now we need to actually start programming this stuff in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating our scene components, all right? So what we're going to do is I'm going to set our spring arm equal to create default sub-object of a U spring arm component. I'm going to take the text spring arm. We're also going to create our camera, which is also going to be a default subject, that's it, default sub object, sorry. Okay, and this is all done inside of our constructor, remember, all right? And I'm going to take the text of just camera. And we also need to do the same for our mesh, if you remember from last time, which is create default sub object, new static mesh component, 
text mesh. Okay, so what we've done here is basically we've attached inside of here. We can add the, we can add sub objects here by like if we wanted to grab our actor and drag him in here, that would be a sub object. Such as when we drag the actor in, one of his sub objects in here is mesh. Okay, that's a, that is a sub object. All right, because it's a component that we've set equal to. Okay, but obviously we're not adding our actor. So, but that's all we're doing, okay, we're just creating it and attaching a spring arm, a camera, and a mesh to it, all right? That's all we're doing here. But now, we need to position these things, all right? Such as being able to set the spring arm so it's attached to where it needs to be, so we can rotate around that pivot point. And if you remember from last time, I mentioned that the pivot point is called the root component. But since we've got a mesh, we want to try, we want to set our root component equal to mesh because we want our camera or in this case our spring arm to rotate around this mesh all right so that's why we set the root component equal to that okay so now we need to actually start attaching stuff so we're going to spring arm obviously because it's a pointer we're going to have to use this little arrow and we're going to attach to our root component which is our mesh we're also going to set a target length for it because we need to set how far we want to be away from it and about 350 units it is about good and the reason i've chosen 350 that's about 3.5 meters um because this goes off centimeters every unit in game is equal to about one centimeter so i believe that's how i've sort of figured it out in my head anyway i'm going to come and set the spring arm i'm going to set its rotation set world rotation to be looking down at our character by default. It will be editable, but this is kind of like the default starting object. And the reason it's the default is because obviously we're using it inside of our con constructor, which sets the default values for everything, which means we can edit them later on, but it's nice to have a default position so it looks nice when we join the game rather than having to do some sort of weird movement to get into a position we like. All right, so this world rotation is gonna take a variable of an F rotator. Um, Spell it, which is a sort of class made by Unreal for us to have rotations, in it, which is done in degrees. Um, it goes off pitch, yaw, and then roll, I think. So we want to have our pitch to be minus 60 degrees, because obviously we're looking down, so it's a negative value. And we're just going to keep the roll and the yaw as standard. All right. I don't know why I put nipple on the line Like so. All right, and that's all we need to do with our spring arm, as far as I'm aware. So now what we need to do is we need to go camera, I can actually spell it, like so, and we need to attach this to our spring arm, because it's going to be attached at the end of the spring arm, and we need to set it to the right socket of the spring arm, which is going to be the U spring arm component, double column, socket name. All right, so that just attaches it at the end of our spring arm rather than being like, halfway along so that we actually get the full target arm length out of it. And that is pretty much it in here. Also, what we need to add is we need to add auto possess player because when the game starts we need to, rather than getting that spectator view like we had before, like when we hit play and we go into sort of like this, uh, that controls player zero, right, which is the client we're using right now. So we need to auto possess player zero and the way we do this is we've got auto possess player and we set this equal to auth e auto receive input double colon player zero. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to start implementing the actual input. So we're gonna want to create these two functions here, mouse your mouse pitch. But this is gonna be called, those two functions will be called upon through this setup in player input component. So we need to actually allow the engine to recognize input from our mouse uh, when we actually want it to, all right? Which we don't have to hard code it, we want to just be able to add it easily and quickly, all right? So we're gonna go to settings, project settings. I scroll down to input, and we wanna add two new axis mappings. We're gonna have one called mouse your, and one called mouse pitch, okay? Mouse your, is going to be our mouse X because X is our left and right and mouse pitch will be mouse Y because Y is our up and down. All right, so we've got our yaw, we've got our pitch 
and now they're ready to implement. That's all we need to do. You need to remember these two strings you created. You can call it anything you want, but for easy simplicity, I've called it mouse view or mouse pitch. Okay, so now I'm going to go back into Visual Studio and set up this. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go input component, which is the parameter here, all right, which is your input component. We want to bind an axis of a mouse your. The user class is this, and the actual uh, function we're calling upon when it's going to plug in the um, axis variable is we're going to go and, which is the um, which stands for an address location. So we're going to be a. I think it's tot pawn double colon. Um, it will be mouse your like so, right? And that's going to automatically apply the um, input we just added, and it's going to plug in its float value into the mouse your component. Because remember, this takes a float in here. All right. We want to do the same, the same thing for pitch. Okay. So I'm just going to copy and paste that and go mouse pitch, and we'll just paste that in there. So now we need to create the two uh, the two um, functions. So we go void a top pawn like so, double colon mouse your. It's going to take a float and it's going to be an axis value, and we're going to open that up. And we do exactly the same for pitch. Just have to mouse pitch. Okay, so we've created our two functions inside of here now. All right. Oh, I should call functions. I should call them procedures because we don't actually uh, return anything. And what these two procedures are going to do is it's going to set. It was a mouse input, I think, which is the f vector two D we made. All right. So your will take mouse input dot x and set that equal to axes. And the mouse pitch will take mouse input dot y and set that equal to axes. All right. So we've got our X and Y working as they should. Looks like uh, Visual Studio is having another hissy fit. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that code there. It's just having a bit of a. It's having a moment. It's fine. See, it's gone away now. All right. Now, what we need to do is we need to then apply the changes of these mouse variables to our to our string down component and our actor every second. So what we're going to use is the tick component. All right. This is going to be called every frame for us to change our camera. It's okay of do, using um, like the camera and the default tick component here because um, it's frame rate related. But stuff like movement, we want to try and detach that from frame rate so everyone's got an equal opportunity when we start making more multiplayer type things, which is great for Unreal because it allows you to implement multiplayer games really easy. All right, let's get started with the uh, actual rotation of the camera. So we're going to create another variable called f rotator. So. And we're going to call this new your, all right, which is going to be equal to get actor rotation, because we're going to act. Oh, whoops! I completely messed that up. Get actor rotation. And the reason we're getting the actor's rotation and not the spring arm components is because our spring arm is attached to our mesh. So when we rotate our actor, which also rotates our mesh, that means that we are camera we should rotate along with it because we're at a fixed pivot point all right we're also going to create another variable to handle pitch all right so we're going to call this new pitch and this is going to be equal to our spring arm component and we're going to get component rotation all right because this is going to handle our um, pitch all right so new your dot your is going to plus equal um, mouse input dot x, all right, which is going to be constantly being updated by our function down here when we add input, all right. New pitch dot pitch is going to plus equal mouse input dot y, all right. This here, this new pitch thing, all right, we're going to change this in a minute because we don't actually want it to do this, and you'll see why in just a moment, all right. Um, and also, we're going to set the new rotations, right? So we need to set actor rotation. All right. Apparently, that didn't work. 
the actor rotation to New York. And we need to set the spring arm rotation set world rotation to our new pitch like so and that's us done apart from we're going to change this this line here in a minute and you'll see why so I'm going to hit F7 like so we're going to wait for it to compile make sure we've got no syntax errors or any errors in our code perfect build succeeded 2 out of 2 alright so now what we're going to do is we're going to drag our pawn into the game Hopefully it didn't crash. And we didn't crash, which is a great sign, alright? Camera's on the floor, but if we bring it up a bit, you can see it's just colliding. Alright? And you can see our rook opponent, which is also our mesh, is connected to the bottom there. And our camera spring arm. Camera's attached to the top because we use the socket name. And the bottom on the other end will be our rook component, which is our mesh. Alright, so if we hit mesh here, right, we can change our mesh to statue again, like we did with our actor. And there we go, he's attached, alright? So, hopefully, I'm hoping it works anyway, when we run the game, we can see we can move up and down, alright, which is absolutely fantastic, alright, left and right isn't working because of a certain issue I'll show you in a minute, and yeah, so we can see up and down, but if we go too far up, or too far down, we can actually mess the camera's view, and that's why we're going to change that line in just a second, alright, so, what we're going to do, we're going to back out, we're going to delete it, well, we can, like so, Alright, and we're going to come back into here. And the way we fix this is we're going to set mouse pitch equal to fmaf, double colon, clamp, alright, which is going to make sure that our value can't go above or below a certain thing. So we're going to new pitch, because we still need to have the plus equals in there. So new pitch dot pitch will plus um, mouse input dot why okay and i think the maximum we should be able to go down to is minus 80 degrees and so that's the minimum value can be sorry and i think that we should be able to look directly above which is at the top which is zero degrees which i think is perfectly fine all right so i'm going to compile this again and we're going to see how it changes the yaw isn't going to work properly just yet and i'll tell you why in a minute because it's a mistake i've made personally and you'll all make sense in time once we come around from it. So if we come back in, hoping the editor hasn't crashed. Oh no it's not, okay. Drag our pawn back in, bring it up, give our mesh the statue again. Like so, and then we hit play. We can see we can look up and down and we can only go up to the top at zero degrees, but we can't go all the way down into the floor that like we did before. Alright. But you can see your isn't working, alright? Our act is rotating, but our spring arm isn't, component isn't. Alright, and I'm going to show you how to fix that now. Oh, right, sorry about that, someone just came in and I had to pause for a moment. But anyway, back to what I was saying, alright? The reason that um, our uh, actor, alright, rotates the way he does uh, is because of an error I've made in here, alright? You see here where we've got, we're defining two variables and then we're doing all of our computational stuff for the pitch and yaw at the bottom, alright? We kind of want to handle these separately because it's ticking. Right? I, I, I don't really have a full explanation of why this happens, all right? But this is the only explanation I could personally come up with. Is it's ticking and it's trying to handle all of this at once and it's not doing it properly, all right? So the way we fix this is if we move this up, all right? So we move anything to do with pitch, such as the New York thing here underneath there, and also bring our set actor rotation to underneath here, alright, like so, and it should be rest work now, I don't know why, but that's not the way it works, hit F7, uh, we go back to our editor, sorry, and then hit compile, alright, so we compile the C++ code, we'll wait for it to compile, once it does a thing, alright, and you'll see that when we go back into our game in a second, it will rotate properly, so you can see here, if I hit play, alright, we can go up, down, left, and right, okay, and that is pretty much it. We're not going to add movement today, all right? Because that's a thing for another time. But for now, that is how we can add a player control camera, all right? Which is absolutely fantastic. All right, so what have we done today? We've managed to add a spring arm, attach it to our root component, which is our mesh, all right? We've managed to rotate the spring arm, give it a static mesh component, and also receive player input. 
as well as manage to lock that player input so we can go, only go to certain values such as only not letting it phase through the floor at 90 degrees which is absolutely fantastic anyway guys that's all I wanted to show you today thanks for watching if you liked the video like it if you didn't like it dislike it and leave a comment down below of what you want to see next time or how you think I should improve this little miniature series thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one